All right, a little bit about the quizzes that I just handed back. Um, oh, what the heck? Hold on a second. There we go. Uh, the quizzes that I handed back, if it does not have a grade on the top, it's 100, all right? If it has a grade, then I took off for something, and you'll have to look back to see what that was. Um, let me talk about today, what we're going to do. Today we're going to cover, let's see, we're going we're gonna to do 2.5 in the book, and we're going to do, or at least try to do as much of 2.8 as possible. We're going to skip 2.6 for now. Then on Wednesday, we will finish 2.8. We will review for exam one. Exam one is next Monday. And as far as what will be on that exam, I will talk about that on Wednesday. And most likely what I'll do is I'll be handing you a review which will be um, a set of problems that, that you should look at to get yourself ready for that exam Monday. Um, it'll cover everything that we've done up to that point. Okay, Not every single problem, but um, being here on Wednesday is an important thing for you because that'll tell you, you know, what to expect. All right? Questions? Okay, now we do have a lot of material to cover today. So I'm going to get right into it. I know you may have questions over homework. What I'm going to do is I'm going to defer that till the end of class if there's time. If we run out, then you're going to have to just come to my office if you have questions on homework. I'm not collecting homework today. I'm hoping you all did your homework. Um, that's the expectation, at least. OK, here we go. <clears throat> so two point, oh, wait a minute. Did I say two? Yeah. Give me a second here. I opened my book to the wrong place here. So we are going to do 2.5. So we finished last time with 2.4. Uh, 2.5 is problems involving percents. Okay. Problems that involve percents. So first, we need to all make sure we're on the same page. You know, what does percent mean? So if I write, let's say, n percent, underneath this, I'll put an example, 30 percent. Then the question is, what does that mean, right? So when we say 30 or n percent, what we're saying is n out of 100. So when you say 30%, that means 30 out of, a, out of 100. Now 30 out of 100, or n out of 100, can also be written as a fraction, n over 100. Or in the specific example of 30, it would be 30 over 100. And if you were to get on your calculator and actually type in 30 divided by 100, you would get a decimal on your calculator, it would be 0 0.3. So what winds up happening here is, I don't know if you can see this, but if you start at 30%, the rule is that if you want to turn a percentage into a decimal, that you take the decimal point, which is on the 30, you see it right behind the, the zero? You take that decimal point and you move it two places to the left to turn it into a decimal. So I would move this two places to the left. And notice if I do that, what I get is this result over here. Now, if you want to go from a decimal back to a percentage, you do it the other way around, right? You start at the point 0.3, and this time you move it two places to the right, right? Have you all seen that before? Hopefully, most of you have. OK, so our goal today is to solve problems, word problems, Yes, word problems involving percentages. And 
we're going to wind up solving linear equations. Okay, that's what's going to, it's going to come down to linear equations in one variable. So everything we've been doing up to this point will apply today. So the book has a certain way of approaching this. I'm going to do it a slightly different. I'm going to start with some basic examples, and then we'll get into the word problems. So let's start with this problem right here. Um, 300, this is your first example, 338 is what percent of 520, question mark. Is there enough light in the room? You all all right? 338 is what percent of 520? So um, when we do this, let's first think about it. You know, try and, try and come up with some, some other numbers that might be easier in your mind to work with. Like, let's just say this had been th 300, and let's say this one over here was 600. Then the question would be, 300 is what percent of 600? So what would you think? <clears throat> what does your instinct tell you here? <clears throat> Isn't 300 about half of 600? So what percentage is that? How do we say half a per, in a percentage? Well, half, y'all are right, half is 0.5, isn't it? And converting 0.5 to a percentage, you'd move the decimal point two places to the right. So you would go 1, 2, and that would give you a 50%. So it makes sense that or does that make sense that if we use 300 and 600, we get about 50%? Yeah? So when we say, go back up to our problem, 338 and 520, that's not quite half, is it? It's actually, 338 is actually a little more than 520, half of 520, right? So we should expect an answer that's somewhere a little above 50%. That's what I'm getting at, is whenever you look at these problems, you try and think through them a little bit first, because if your answer at the end of this is like 2%, something is wrong, right? And you want to always look back at things and make sure that your answer makes sense. Okay, now, <clears throat> let me erase this and let me get on to this problem. So there was a key word in this word problem that I talked about last time, right? Is, what was the word is in a word problem? An equals, right? So let's see if we can start constructing this line into an equation. So 338 is means equals what percent, right? What percent? Isn't that what we want to know, right? We want to know the percentage. So let's call it, hmm, how about X, right? Can we call this X? X is what we want to know. And then of, what was that keyword of in our word problems? Remember what of was? Uh, Two-thirds of a number, half of a number. Um, close. What's the opposite operation of division? Multiplication. Now look, if it was addition, it would say you know, what percent plus a number or something like that or added to a number. If it was subtraction, it would say something like taken away or less than, right? Of in a word problem is multiplication. Normally, it's multiplication. So I'm going to put a dot to represent my multiplication that comes from the word of. And then, of course, the last thing there is what, 520? So I'm going to put 520 out here. Now, we normally don't write x times 520, we usually flip it around, write 520x, don't we? So I'm going to write 338 equals 520x. Now, what type of equation is that? Linear equation, one variable, right? And all I have to do, I could go through all the steps right now, but we're really kind of towards the end, aren't we? All we have to do is get that x by itself. And to get that x by itself, what do we do? Divide both sides by 520, right? Divide by 520. That will allow the x to be by itself. 
and on the left side we have to we could leave it as a fraction but now that we are going to want to know our answer as a percentage right doesn't it say a percent we're going to need that as a decimal so i'm going to break out my calculator and you'll want to bring your calculators to class okay uh, for today i'll let you use your phone but everyone should have a basic function calculator for this class that way on a test you can't use your phone so you've got to have something basic to go off of um, I'm going to do 338. I'm going to divide that by 520. And I get 0.65 equals X. Now, that's my answer, right? And what was X supposed to be? The percentage, right? Right now, it's a decimal. So I want to convert it to a percentage. How do I uh, convert a percentage? I mean, a decimal? Two places which way? To the right. So we get a final answer of 65%. And does that make sense? I mean, like we said it should be above 50, right? Turns out to be 65%. All right. Let's look at another one. Do you want me to leave that up there for a second, or are we okay? No, just let me know. All right. How about what is nine point five percent of six hundred sixteen? I think I like this little stand. It's going to work out nice. All right. So maybe we can think about this, again, trying to come up with some numbers that might make sense. A number close to 9.5%, how about 10%? Maybe. Does anyone know what 10% of 16 would be? Should it be more than half? 10% should be less than half of that number, right? So in our minds, we know that our answer shouldn't be bigger than 600, right? Whatever we get shouldn't be bigger than 616. 10% is a smaller part of that number. Let's try and write out the equation, though, okay? Same thing we just did. First word, what? What? Is, let's go with the is. Everyone comfortable with what is is? What is is? What, what is is? That just sounds like bad English there. What is is? It's going to be an equal sign. All right. 9.5% of. That's going to be, what's the of? Multiplication. So I'm supposed to multiply 9.5% and 616, right? Do you all see that? I'm supposed to multiply these two. Here's 616. But we can't multiply 9.5% on your calculator. So we need to convert 9.5% to a decimal. So we move it, move the decimal two places to the left. One, two. And when we do that, a zero appears and we have a point in front of it, right? So that'll become point or if, if you want to follow the book, 0 0.095. Y'all see that? Now, what am I missing? Yeah, so what's X? Where does X go? What? What is the X, right? What's what you wanted to know? What is? So what is, what is going to be the X? So X is 0 0.095 times 616. And again, I get on my calculator. I go 0 0.095 times 616. And I get 58.52. See, X was already solved for, wasn't it? Like I didn't have to do any moving things around. 
it was it was ready to go. There we go. Do you all follow that? Any questions? Okay, in the previous problem, we saw for x, right? And x turned out to be a percentage. Here, we saw for x, but x wasn't a percentage. It was, it was a number, right? I mean, it was in the problem, we were given the percentage, weren't we? And we were asked to solve for some other number. That's the way it's going to work in this, in, in this section. Usually, you're either going to be asked to solve for the percentage or you're going to be asked to solve for a number, one or the other. And in all cases, it should turn out to a linear equation with one variable. Okay, this will be our last one before we start our word problems. Okay, 126 is 15% of what number? Question. 126 is what is 15 percent of what number are you starting to look at these and see the equal and multiplication i mean they starting to kind of pop out at you okay i have the is that's my equal right i have the of that's my multiplication so i should write down 126 right that's going to be on the left side of the equation is is equals now 15 percent i could write 15 percent right but you're always going to want to convert these over to decimals so what's 15 percent as a decimal 0.15 so i'll put 0 0.15 of is multiplication so times and then what number is our x So how do we get that x by itself now? <coughs> Divide both sides by 0.15. So I'll divide through. So 126 divided by 0.15, 840. is x questions let me go back up to the word problem and where i circled what number i'm going to just real big right here 840 and i'm going to read it again and see if it makes sense 126 is 15 percent of 840. well isn't 15 percent smaller than whatever it was originally right? Like half would be half of it. 15% is even, even less. So does it make sense that 126 is 15% of 840? Does that make sense to you? I mean, that's kind of, a, what do you call a question where I don't really want an answer? I just want you to think about it. Rhetorical, right? That's more of a rhetorical question. You're supposed to just think about that yourself. Does it make sense? Okay, that's, the, that's basically what we're, the skills we're going to need as far as math-wise to be able to do the problems in this section. The challenge now is that they're not going to give us this sentence. They're going to give us a word problem, and we're going to have to turn it into one of these sentences. Once we have it in a sentence, then we go to the equation, then we solve the equation. Okay? That sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? <clears throat> I know. Okay, we're going straight to word problems now. Here we go. Uh, hmm. John buys four new tires which were regularly I always have trouble with my G's. Regularly, 
$4.99 each. They are on sale for 20% off. If sales tax is 6%, how much is John's total question? This is a realistic problem, I think. I had to go buy a couple of tires the other day. I mean, I didn't sit there and compute all this, but I could have, right? But maybe someone's shopping for tires and they want to know, hey, they're on sale. You know, maybe I should get these. Let's see how much he's going to pay. Well, someone try and tell me how you would do this. Like, what, what's your thinking here? How do you want to go about this? Okay, is it 20% off each tire as opposed to 20% the total? Okay, great question. The tires are on sale for 20% off, so that means 20% off each, or it doesn't matter actually. If you, if you add up the four tires and then take 20% off later, you can do that. You just can't take the 20% off after tax. So what we're going to have to do is get the four tires. Okay, we can take 20% off each one, or we can add them up and take 20% off of that, those four added. Either way, it's the same result. Um, that's the first question. So if that, you know, how would you want to approach it then? This is an open question to anyone here. Okay, so hold on, hold on. You're getting... You're, you're writing out all the equation. Hold, let's hold off. My, what I gather from what you're saying is, okay, so you're saying let's add up all the tires first, which is 4 times 94.99, and then take 20% off that. Does that sound okay? Okay, let's start with that. And, and then 6% off? So that's a great sales tax. I love that idea. That'd be awesome. Okay. So first thing, let's figure out how much these tires would be at regular price for all four. So for all four, four tires at $94.99 each is, the computation is 4 times 99.94.99. By the way, that's four times, or you could go 94.99 plus 94.99 four times, right? Same, it's the same thing. So 94.99 times four, 379.96. All right, so that's how much John would pay before tax, right? if they were regularly priced. Agree? Okay, now, he's gonna get 20% off of that. So what would, how do we do 20% off of that? So watch this, okay? This is where the math is gonna start to come into play. We wanna know what 20% 20, 20 is off of that price, right? How can I write that out first in a sentence? We want to know the new price, don't we? Yes? The new price? I'm going to say X is new price for all four tires. We want to know that. And isn't X 20% um, off of that? Who's going to make the big connection here? Because I need someone to help me make this connection.
okay, division or multiplication. Let's think about this. If I write 379.96 and I divide by 0.2, I'm going to get a big number. You can do it yourself. It'll be a really big number. If I do 379 times 0.2, isn't that, what would that mean? What would 0.2, that's 20%, times that number, what would that result? But tell me in words, what is that? What is this result? That's, read it out. 20%, that's 20% of, right, multiplication of, that's 20% of 379, isn't it? That's how much I would have taken off, isn't it? That's one approach. Can somebody think of the another approach? Because we don't really, I'm, I don't want to know what 20% of 379.96 is. That's how much, that's not how much I'm going to pay. Aren't I going to pay 80%? If they're going to give me 20% off, doesn't that mean I'm really going to be paying 80% of what the original price was? It's a different way of thinking. You can sit there and say, how much, is, how much do I take off that price? Or you can say, what's 80% of it? There's two, two totally different ways of going about it. So I'll ask you, would you be more comfortable finding out first how much 20% is and then just taking it away? Yes? Okay, let's do it that way. But if you ever go somewhere and you know, someone's like, well, we're going to take 20% off, and what they do is they do 0.8 times the number, that's what they're doing. They're just finding out what 80% is because that already has the 20% taken off. But we're, we'll do it this way. Okay, X is the new price. So if we're going to do X is the new price, how about we do it this? Isn't that old? Minus 20% off. Isn't my new car price going to be the old price, the old price, take away 20% of the old price? The old price old price is this much. My new price is that old price, take off the 20%. So let me try and write this out now in an equation. X is, is equals, that's, that's kind of this equals right here. This right here is my is my X. My new price is what? What's the old? 379.96 minus, how much am I going to take away from the old price? 20% of the old one, right? So times 379.96. See if that makes sense to you. You have to figure out what 20% of the old price is, right? So there's our, that's the computation we're going to do for it, 20% times the 379.96. But then we, take, we have to take that away from the original well, old price. So that's why we have to have that here in the beginning. So let's go ahead and on our calculators, we'll do this. What am I going to do on my calculator to do that computation? Am I going to do 20 times that? No, 0.2, right? So let's go ahead. X equals 379.96 minus 0.2 times 379.96. What do you get there? Anyone? 75.992. Anyone getting 992? No one's doing it, just me. Okay. That's good. All right. Now let's subtract it. We should have we should have our answer. Three oh three uh 37, oh, wait, 308, 303, 97. Thank you.
Okay. We have a couple of people that agree with that. I prefer to not do the computation, let you do them, and then we all kind of agree. All right, so that's, that's it, right? Are we done? No, Uncle Sam needs his cut, right? Government needs their money. So we have to pay sales tax on that. So what we need to do now is figure out how much our total is going to be. Now, when you talk about total, this is kind of a new problem now. It's it's its own, it's its own new thing here. The total is going to be equal to your base price. I'm going to say the base cost plus what? The six percent tax, right? We have to we have to add tax to that. So what we have is the tax on the base price. I'm kind of doing two problems in one when I write it like this. We could just figure out what the tax is and then add it to our total or our, our cost over there, our X, but we're going to do it all in one shot. We're going to have our cost plus the tax on that cost. I'm doing it this way because that's the way the book approaches it. So I'm trying to follow the book as much as possible here. So our total now, and since this is a new problem, our total is the new X, all right? Forget everything that happened above. Our total is the new x equals our base cost plus what's tax? According to this problem, right, it's 6%. Now, how do I write 6% as a decimal? 0 0.06. And then on the base price of what operation now? Tax, I'm going to do 6% of the base, right? times the 303.97. I'm, I'm at the bottom of this page, so I'm going to try and cram it all in here. 303.97. I'm going to multiply that times 0 0.06. I get 18.2382. We're going to round it to the nearest cent. So what's 18.2382 going to round to? 24, yep. So we'll go X is equal to 303.97 plus 18.24. And now add those up. Three twenty-two point two one dollars right? Dollars. Pardon me? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. All righty. You all all right with that? Get the idea? Okay. Um, let's uh, try another one. The, the next one requires a picture. So I'm going to try and draw a picture as best I can. Have you all ever seen a pie chart before or pie graph? Let's, let's see how you do with this. I'm going to draw it on the right side. Circle. Thirty three percent. It's going to be a really bad picture. Sorry. 33%, 13%, sorry, they're not drawn perfectly here, uh, 6%, and the last one here, 4%. Okay, what this chart represents is the percent of cancer cases by the type of cancer 
in men. So I have to label some stuff here. This 33% is prostate cancer. This is real cheery, isn't it? The next one, 13%, is lung. The six, oh no, the 11% is colon cancer. The six percent, bladder. It's kind of making me nauseous right now, isn't it? And four percent is melatoma. What's that? Melan melanoma. Sorry, melatoma. Melanoma. Isn't melatonin like a sleep aid, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Oops. And then the last one is other. The book has a much better picture than this. All right. So our question is, how many... cases of lung cancer would we expect in a group uh, of 750,000 men? So the table or the pie chart on the right tells you, like, historically, out of all the different types of cancer in men, 33% of them are prostate, 13% are lung, 11% is colon, 6% bladder, melanoma, et cetera, right? So if that's what the known percentages are, then if you have a group of 750,000 men, how many of them should you expect to have lung cancer? Or how many of those cases would be lung cancer cases? Okay? Y'all all right with this? Um, I, need to, I need to make sure you understand. Huh? What's that? I'm sorry? I, I'm, I did, that went, I didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Uh, look, so let's, let's try and get our head around percentages again. On this chart, if I had 100 men in a room that all had a type of cancer, 100 men, how many of them would have, would I expect to have uh, melanoma? If there are 100 men that all have cancer in a room, four of them, okay? If I have 100 men in the room, that doesn't mean, just 100 men standing in a room, that doesn't mean that four of them have melanoma and 33 of them have prostate cancer, right? It's saying of the people with cancer, men with cancer, these are the percentages. Understood? So that's why I put in there on the green on the bottom, how many cases of, of lung cancer would we expect in a group of 750,000 men with cancer, all right? Assuming that they all have cancer. That kind of sucks. That's a lot of men with cancer. But with that, that's the number in the book, so I'm going off of that. Um, how many would we expect to have lung cancer? So, Anyone want to try and help me set this up? Well, what's the percentage for lung cancer? 13%. So shouldn't 13% of those men have, have lung cancer? 13% of those men. So how do we say that? 13% of those men, 
How many men? 750,000. Should have cancer, should have lung cancer? This highlighted part, 13% of 750,000, is, is a mathematical statement right there. That's 0 0.13 times 750. But what's that answer? That's X, right? That's what we want to solve for. So I'm going to put here 0 0.13 um, times 750,000 is what we're looking for, the number of men that should have lung cancer. So just do that computation, 0.13 times 750, 1, 2, 3, 97,500. Okay, that's all I'm going to do in this section for now, okay, because we need to get into the next section. Uh, I gave myself a cap here of, of 45 minutes. So the homework you should look at, and what I want to do is, because this is our first test, and I don't want to blow everyone out of the water necessarily right away, the, the homework that I want you to do for this is just going to be numbers 5 through 16 all, all right? But uh, Sorry, page 144. All of these problems are like the first ones I did without the word problem, okay? Like what is 5% of 340? Just the basic stuff. That way you start, go straight to the equation from that and you solve it, all right? What we'll do is when we come back to do that section we're skipping, I'll revisit the word problems and we'll put that on that test, all right? So we're kind of, we're kind of ex giving ourselves a little bit of a break there. Okay, we need to move on to the next section, which is 2.8, linear inequalities. And I'm going to add to this in one variable. I did that earlier, right? I said the book doesn't talk about one variable when we were talking about linear equations. Well, we're going to be talking about something. The book doesn't mention this again, but later on it should help us. So notice, notice the uh, title here, linear. Well, what did that mean to us before, linear? Y'all remember? One variable, linear, meant that we should have an x, and that x should be raised to the first power, right? But we no longer have the word equation. We have this word inequality. And an inequality is something completely different than an equation. So before we can even get into like figuring out how to solve these, we need to all make sure we're on the same page when it comes to an inequality and what it means. So I'm going to start here with the four inequality symbols. Symbols for inequality. Doesn't when you when you read or when you say the word inequality, right? In in the real world inequality means like we're not being treated the same, right? It's inequality in the workplace or whatever. Well, in mathematics, inequality means the same thing. It's not the same. Um, and we're talking about numbers. So we're talking about numbers that are not the same. So an example would be something like this. 
right? You all seen that symbol before? That means, or the way we'd say that is 5 is what? Greater than 4, right? 5 is greater than 4. And people are taught all sorts of little ridiculous things like the alligator likes to eat the bigger number and all this stuff like that. You know, right? Have you all ever heard that before? I mean, it's, it can get real childish. But the idea is that the, if you look at that symbol, here's our symbol, as like a little pointer, it points to the smaller number, opens up to the bigger number. And then if I wrote this, would, would this be right? Oh, sorry. Would that be right? Okay, now I'm using a, a, the same symbol, but it's pointed the other direction, isn't it? So how would we read that one? Four is less than five, but that's the same as the other one that said five is greater than four. You all agree with those two statements? They're both true? Oops. Okay, what about this? What's the difference with that and this? If I put a little line under the alligator mouth, I'm not going to use alligator. I'm just kind of kidding around there. If I put a line underneath that inequality, that little arrow, greater than or equal, or equal to 4. Do you agree that 5 is greater than or equal to 4? It's, it's one or the other, in other words. Is 5 greater than 4? Yes. Is it equal to 4? No, but that doesn't matter because it's greater than 4. So it has to satisfy one of the two. It's either greater or equal. And then this way, the other direction, that works also, right? 4 is less than or equal to 5. Now, how about this? Is 4 greater than 4? No. Is 4 less than 4? No. So, no, no. But can you do this? Is 4 greater than or equal to 4? Yes. Is 4 less than or equal to 4? Yes. So even though 4 is not greater than 4, it is equal to 4, so that, is, that inequality makes sense. Do you all understand that the, the greater than or equal it can be one or the other? All right. So now let's get into these basic inequalities then. Here's your first example. What if I tell you some number is greater than 4? Can somebody tell me exactly one answer? Or in other words, is there only one answer? No. Someone give me an example of a number that is greater than 4. Five, another one, six, right? Anything you can think of, right? Bigger than four. And there's an infinite number of answers, isn't there? That's very different than what we've been doing before. And every problem we did in the last couple of sections, we always had like, what, one answer? We did say that there's a possibility of no answer and infinite answers. Remember that? But here we're saying that there could be more than one. So I'm going to try and write this out using what we've been doing. Some number is X, right? We don't know what it is is greater than, is greater than. Now, this is no longer an equal symbol. When I say it's greater than 4, can it be equal to 4? If I say greater than, no. It has to be greater, bigger than 4. It can't be equal to it. It can't be smaller. So how am I going to write that with a symbol? Like that. Yeah, you can use alligator. It's okay. The alligator eats the X, points to the 4. Do you all agree with that? And actually, that's, that's it. I mean, that's our solution. That's the way mathematically we say everything bigger than 4. There's an infinite number of answers here, isn't there? Now, the way the book will have you write it is as follows. They'll have you write a brace x align x greater than 4 close the brace this is called set builder notation the set the the the, the braces around that 
just tell you that this is a set of numbers. A set of numbers. It's the set of numbers. It's set of all x. Then this symbol means such that. And then this together means x greater than 4. And unfortunately, that is the way I'm going to want you to write your answers using set builder notation. Because where we're headed later on in this class, it's going to be important to be comfortable with that notation. OK, I think I'm ready to give you your first like, decent example now. Can I move on? All right. I want you to solve this. 2x plus 1 less than hmm, 27. Now, what are we looking at right now? What is this? You see x, right? First power? It's linear, right? Is it a linear equation? No, it's a linear inequality. We only have one variable, so it's a linear equality in one variable. The way we're going to solve a linear equality in one variable is very similar to the way that we're, we solve linear equations. We're going to treat the inequality symbol just the way we treated the equal symbol, with one exception. But I'm not going to tell you that exception yet. Okay? We're just going to do this problem first. So how would we go about doing this? We try and get the x by itself, right? So what would happen first? Okay, Subtract 1 on both sides. That's, that's basically the step of isolating or getting that x term by itself and getting all the numbers to the other side. So I subtract 1 on both sides. I get 2x less than 26, right? And now I would do what? Divide by 2, right? Divide by 2, divide by 2. Now I'm going to highlight this step, OK, big time. Because anytime we have an inequality, when we get to this last step right here, when you divide or multiply, you always have to ask yourself one question, just this one question. Dividing by negative, ask yourself that question, question mark. So you say to yourself, self, am I dividing by a negative number right now? Am I? What am I dividing by? Two. Two is a positive number, right? So the answer to my question there is no, right? I'm not. So I'm just going to keep going. If your answer is yes to this, you're going to see what we're going to have to do, but I'm not ready to show it to you yet. So, but just remember, on the step of dividing both sides, you'll always have to ask yourself that question with inequalities. So divide your twos out. You get x, right? Less than, what's uh, 26 divided by 2? 13. X is less than 13. X is less than 13. OK. How can I write that in set builder notation? Well, the set, so brace of X's such that X is less than 13. Close it off. Really, the only thing you're doing is the stuff in blue is kind of like always there. And, and your answer is the part that gets inserted right in here. Do you all see that? You just kind of throw your answer into that blue structure, and then you're there. <clears throat> but what does this answer mean? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, what does the answer, x less than 13, mean? It means if we take any number, right, 
less than 13, that will be true up there. So I want to go back up to this original problem. I'd like for somebody to give me any number smaller than 13. 7. Okay, plug 7 in here. What's 2 times 7 plus 1? That's the left side of that equation. 15. Is 15 smaller than 27? Yes. Turns out we pick any number smaller than 13, and this will be true. Let's try something that's not smaller than 13. How about 20? Plug 20 in there. 2 times 20 plus 1. That's 40 plus 1. That's 40. 41 is not bigger than 27, so that wouldn't work. So you see how our set gives us all the answers without us having to write down all the answers. Now I want us to discuss real quickly on you know, what this uh, represents on a number line. How, do, how would you graphically, if this is zero on a number line, remember the number line goes both directions, what does everything less than 13 look like? Well, isn't 13 somewhere here to the right? Like 13 is to the right of zero. And all the numbers smaller than 13 would be to the left of that, wouldn't it? So I'm going to try and like shade this side of the line. Wow, it's really hard to shade on this thing. I just draw like a squiggly shade and then an arrow like that. That's everything to the left, isn't it? The big question now for you is if it's everything to the left of 13, whether or not you can include 13 or not. Is 13 included or not? No. Only because our inequality symbol did not have the equals under it. So when I draw a number line like this, how do I let you know that I don't want you to have 13 there? You, there's two ways to do it. You can either do an, a circle like this, but you have to leave that circle open, which means don't shade it in. Or do what the book does. The book does a parenthesis that way, like this. Now, if you do want to include it, we'll shade it, and we'll use a bracket instead of a parenthesis. Okay? Do you all see that or not? I mean, it's, it's like everything to the left of 13, the parenthesis says don't include 13. I like the open circle instead of the parenthesis, but the book does the parenthesis. All right, we're going to do another one. Four x plus seven greater than or equal to six x minus I want us to solve this. So first thing, we look at it. It's a linear inequality, right? Not an equation. Linear inequality in one variable. <clears throat> Let me try and real quick just show you. This is the reason why I'm being so uh, stressing linear inequality in one variable, because this will be one of the main goals at the end of this class. is to solve something like that. It's actually, this is later on, I'm going to call this a system of linear inequalities in two variables. Okay, so you have to understand what the language of this is important, because every one of these is going to have a different approach. That's going to be an interesting problem when we get to it. All right, uh, so this one, though, we can work this out. Uh, if you go through all the steps, I said treat your equal sign, uh, inequality sign like an equal sign. So I'm going to start moving things around, and, and I'm not going to go through all the steps because, you know, hopefully you've done the homework and you're kind of comfortable with them. Um, but I will point out we don't have grouping symbols. We don't have fractions or decimals. So this is really just moving things around. So your choice, but I, I think I'll force your hand here. How about if I subtract x, 6x on both sides? and I subtract 7 on both sides. What that does is it moves all the variables to the left and all the numbers to the right, as you'll see when I do it.
right? By subtracting 7 from positive 7, it goes away on the left. From sub by subtracting 6x on both sides, it goes away on the right. What is still on my left side of the inequality? Negative 2x, good. Greater than or equal to? What's negative 13 take away 7? Negative 20. Negative 13, you owe someone $13, and then you lost a bet, and you owe someone $7. Now you have negative 20 now, right? Now what? To get x by itself. Divide both sides by negative 2, right? And what was the question I, I told you to ask yourself? Are you dividing by a negative number? In this case, yes, I am dividing by a negative number. You're allowed to do that, but you have to do one thing. Who knows? I've seen this before. You have to flip the inequality. Flip inequality. You only do this when? if you're dividing by a negative number or multiplying by a negative number. Now, people always ask me, well, why do you flip it? You know, it has to do with, I won't get into it, but it has to do with the fact that when you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive. Or when you, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're dividing two negatives here. When you do that, it switches signs. So because of that, the inequality must flip also. If you want to know more about it, come by and visit me in my office, and I'll convince you that you have to do it. Um, it just takes too much time to show you. All right, so I'm going to cancel out here. All I have is x, right? Flip the inequality over so the alligator is no longer hungry in that direction. Come on. It is now hungry in the other direction. 10. Negative divided by negative is positive. Only when you divide by negative. I'll put the question here. Did you divide by negative? Question mark. Yes. So flip the inequality. All right. In set builder notation, that is the set of all x such that x less than equal to 10. Now, on a number line, what does that look like? What does that look like on a number line? 10, everything to which side of 10? To the left again, right? I'll do it in highlighter because it's easier for me. Do I include 10 or not? Yes. So the way that the book does it is they put a bracket there facing to the left instead of a parenthesis, a bracket. But if you wanted to, what you could do, and if I was doing this on paper, I would draw a solid dot, and I would have shaded this way like this and done that. But this is the answer that would be in the back of the book. But we need to be able to draw the picture also. You all doing all right with this? All right. Mm, trying to look at what I'd want, to, want you to do for homework. Let me do one more example. We still have 10 minutes. I know everyone wants to go, but one more example. This is called a compound inequality. The 
This is called a compound inequality. A compound inequality is called that because it has more than one in inequality symbol. So compound meaning more than one. So you could look at this as almost two separate problems. The yellow problem is its own problem, right? That's all x's bigger than negative 3. And then the other one, the blue one there, is all x's less than or equal to 10. Right? So how could we resolve this on, let's try it on a number line. I'm going to put the two important numbers on here. There's zero. We have zero somewhere, and then to the left is negative three, and to the right is 10. We are trying to represent all numbers that are what? Where are the numbers that we're looking at? They're, the x's are bigger than what number? N negative three, right? which means they're to what side of negative 3? Numbers bigger or to the right? To the right's bigger, to the left smaller. So I want numbers to the, to the right of, of 3, that's an arrow, negative 3. And then I want numbers that are also smaller than what? 10. So to the left of 10. So isn't that pretty much any, everything between those two? It's like everything between the, the two numbers. So it's Everything, anything in here, right? Anything in there. What do I need to resolve next? What do you think I need to resolve? Yeah, either the circle or the, the dot, right? Or the bracket or parentheses. Do I include these numbers or not? So do I include negative 3? No, because it has just the alligator, right? So parentheses, and I'll aim it which way? Towards the 10, yes, to the right. So it's like this. Or if you like, you can put an open circle there. On the 10, do I want the 10 to be included? Yes. So solid dot or bracket. What would your set builder notation look like? Set of all x such that. Well, just write everything down. You need this to be true, don't you? You need your x to be bigger than negative 3 and less than or equal to 10. I'm just showing you how a compound inequality works. It gave us what's called an interval. And we'll, we'll do more of this next time. Let me give you a homework assignment that you can work on on this. This is page 178. Let's do five. Nine. Thirteen. Forty three. Forty nine. Um, hmm, that's a good one. Forty nine through sixty three odd. Okay, so you have quite a bit of work. My advice to you is to make sure you do your homework before next class, because if you're sitting here and you come in on Wednesday and I start talking about the test, um, you need to have practiced this a little bit or else you're going to be completely kind of blown away. All right? So just go home and work this out. Y'all have a good day.